Today we're going to be painting a watercolor card. Um, this is 140 pound watercolor paper, cold press. Cold press means there's this wonderful texture in it. And I'm using an artist pencil. You don't have to use an artist pencil if you only have just a regular um, Dixon Ticonderoga style number two pencil, that's fine too. And we want to keep our lines really, really light, so nice and simple. We're going to start with a curved line on the bottom. I'm going to go up a little bit to show where the cupcake wrapper is going to be. Make sure that it bends out a little bit. And then a little bit of a wave. A little bit of a wave. And it shows it, that little frilly edge at the top. And then two parentheses on the sides. This is going to be our cake part. And then I want you to make a swooshing line. Big one towards the bottom. Then smaller. Then smaller. And finally at the top we are going to put a cherry. And just kind of connect our lines. Okay, so we have cupcake base, cupcake cake, our delicious yummy frosting, and this cherry on top. Now we're going to start this with a round brush, and this is a size 2. And you're going to notice that my water isn't dripping off of my brush. That's important. I'm just going to wet my edges. And about midway in. And then a little bit on the bottom. I'm going to keep this part dry. And why I'm doing that is because the watercolor is going to go where my water tells it to go. So this is cerulean blue, which is like a sky blue, mixed with a little bit of indigo blue. And we're going to put it on our edge and see where our water is. It starts to bleed. And then we're just going to take, I wiped my brush off in my water. You always want to use warm water. Sometimes on some of my demos I'll even tell you to use hot water. It helps the colors blend together. And right now I'm just taking water and pushing that paint around. Now I don't want to just have a blue cupcake wrapper because I like colorful pictures. So I'm taking a little bit of, it's called permanent rose. And you don't have to use this color. It's not a color you probably even have. Um, well, some of you might. It's a pretty color if you like pink. Color you might want to consider if you end up liking watercolor. But you can use, um, if you have a starter set, there's a color in there probably called crimson. Or depending on the brand, you might even have a lizard crimson. That will work perfectly. Okay. I'm just going to make a couple of those lines that I know are in that wrapper. And you'll notice I kept the middle section white. The white of your page doesn't come back, so protect it. And make sure when you go over it you're really ready to commit to it. Okay. So this is all we're going to do for the bottom for right now. I'm going to take and put some water on that cupcake cake part. Now, I'm going to use a color called Quinacridone Gold. And again, you notice I put the water down first. Why I start on the edges is because edges bend. 
It's a three-dimensional object, so it's where the object bends, which means that's where the shadow collects. So if this is a vanilla cupcake, or a yellow cupcake, um, it's going to be darker on the edge, and that's going to help someone's eye see that it, there's some nice three-dimensionality to it. Okay. Nice and simple. I put very little paint down, and I did the same thing that I did down here. Paint on the edge, and then I just took some water and pulled it inward, right? I'm going to switch brushes to a little bit of a bigger brush. This is a flat brush, size two. It doesn't matter what size you use. Some people are really comfortable with big brushes. Some people use small brushes. I tend to use smaller brushes. Um, find a size you're comfortable with. You'll know after the first couple pictures you know, what you are comfortable with. And I'm just taking and I'm putting water on the bottom part of the swoosh and I'm leaving the top part just the white of the paper with no water on it. And I'm doing that because it's going to give a really pretty effect. I'm taking that pink and going over Whoosh. Kind of keeping it really light, and I'm just taking water and pulling it upward. And instead of keeping it lighter in the middle, in this case, my middle is this middle section of each swoosh. So paint on the bottom, pulling it upward. Paint on the bottom, pulling it upward, and this is all the same pink color. The difference you see is just where I've added more water and where there's more paint as opposed to water. You'll notice I forgot this tiny little part down here. So I gotta go back down there and put it in. Now, if your color bleeds a little bit, and bleed means that it starts going into an area it's not supposed to, you can take your brush, put water on it and just kind of scrub it out a little bit. And we can do that because we kept our colors really light. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back in while I'm letting all of that dry. And I'm gonna take some of this nice indigo blue. I'm gonna put a little bit more at the bottom. More importantly, well, this is a size zero brush, and you'll notice the bend on mine. They are not supposed to do that, but I left my brush sitting down too long once, and it made this little curve. I'm not going to lie. I really love it. So for this kind of a thing, I use my little curved brush. And what we're doing is we're going to make the little um, shadow parts that show the cupcake wrapper is bent away from the cupcake. Notice I'm not doing it everywhere. Someone's eye is going to figure out what's going on without you showing every single possible detail. In all honesty, it'll be more interesting that way too. So 
So now I'm just bouncing between that pink and the blue. This makes a great birthday card, but it also makes a great card for anything that would be celebrated that would involve a cake. So maybe um, it can be a birthday, it can be um, a congratulations, um, you know, anything that you might be celebrating where there's a group of people getting together and there's going to be maybe some presents. I guess what I'm saying is this also makes a very good blank card. So if you're practicing, you might want to make a couple cupcake cards the next time that Aunt Nancy or, you know, your friend Billy, whoever has a birthday or retirement party. That um, might be a little weird for a retirement party, but... Great all-purpose card. I'm going to put some darker areas in where I, I know that frosting is kind of sitting on itself. And then this area down here is a little too undefined. So we're going to also darken that area. Show that it's sitting right on top of the cake. And then we're actually going to change reds for that top cherry. Um, so if you look in your set, you're going to have something called Brilliant Red or Cadmium Red. And it's going to look like a fire engine. That's the red that you want to be using. Because we need it to look different than this pink. ended up grabbing the pink anyway one second sometimes when watercolor dries it's a little bit hard to tell which paints which so I'm gonna have a video on how to organize your palette but I'll also show you mine and it's not organized
So see how that cherry's kind of sitting in there then? And then we gotta make the stem. And then you want to hint the back of the cherry in there also. That way the stem's kind of sticking in the middle. Okay. And now I'm just going in and making a little bit more detail. So take one second and take a flat brush and some of your water. And by this point, your water's got a color to it. Mine's tinged a little bit blue. Um, some colors have a lot more pigment in them. And your water actually becomes a wonderful kind of a stain for your paper. Um, and it'll act as a really light shadow. And sometimes that's all you need. I'm gonna put a little bit more than that though. But you want something to hold your cupcake down a little. So I'm gonna take a little bit more blue, put it in there. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that pink. Now I'm going to show you something very cool about quinacridone gold. So that nice little yellow color we put there, when you put, notice I'm back to my little brush, when you put it on heavier it turns almost this beautiful reddish color. So I just want to hit that area on the side a little bit more. See how it almost even goes brown? You'll notice I keep adding water and then wiping my brush off. And why am I showing you this? Because we put more of that gold down, and now we're gonna add some Van Dyke Brown to it and go from a really light yellow white cupcake to a chocolate cupcake. Because maybe you love chocolate cupcakes. I do. Delicious.
So see how that's a different look? And if you, you prefer um, a darker cupcake instead of the, the lighter one, again, this is quinacridone gold underneath, um, more so on the edges than in the middle, and then let it dry for a couple seconds. You don't have to let it dry for minutes. Seconds is fine. And then pop in a layer of Van Dyke Brown on top, and you want to make sure it's darker right under the frosting line. And we'll give it that nice, that nice uh, golden-y, chocolatey effect. And then it'll look like that frosting sitting right on top. A couple more lines down here. Now you'll notice when I'm using my tiny brush, it's almost like I'm drawing. And you can hear the paper scratching and you can see the lines and it looks dry. This holds barely any water. So it's how you get more fine detail. And you will get used to using small brushes if you like using them. Don't get frustrated if you don't get it right in the beginning. The section with these videos are four. They're just 20 to 30 minutes a day, sometimes even less, practicing some technique. Now I'm going over that white part that I was protecting. Just a hint of color, leaving the middle part still light so it looks a little bit more reflective. Now, this is a great stopping point, okay? If you wanna add some sprinkles, I am gonna show you how to do sprinkles. Very easy. You just take a small brush, and you don't want to have very much water on it, and you're just going to make a few lines with some of the colors you have in here. This is going to be that blue. And you don't want it to be runny, so that nice crisp sprinkles. And make sure they go different ways. You don't, you don't want them all the same way. That would be strange. Be a very organized cupcake. And sprinkles come in tons of colors. So I'm even gonna put some green ones in. Make sure you have a few sticking off the edges too. That'll help it look more three-dimensional also. And then throw some of oh, that fire engine red one, red ones in because you always want to carry the colors throughout, right? And we have that pretty cherry up top, so may as well throw some red sprinkles in there too. <laughs> 